Sorry about that. Now, if there's one thing that Triumph does excel at, it's designing and manufacturing fantastic biker gear. And there's always a distinct danger that I'm gonna bankrupt myself every time I walk into a Triumph clothing department. Now, for the last eight months or so, I've been riding around wearing the new church leather jacket in black. Now, the last time I checked, it looked as though Triumph have discontinued the new church, which is a shame. It's a really high quality, classically styled jacket, and it's great for keeping those cold winds at bay on those long winter rides. Now, it does have vents for use in summer, but the liner isn't removable, and it still gets a bit hot and sticky on those long summer rides. And I've been looking for something that's just a little bit more versatile. <laughs> Barber International should need no introduction, and although they're reputed to be one of the oldest motorcycle clothing manufacturers still in operation today, they've become better known for creating clothing styled on motorcycle clothes rather than the real McCoy. Now recently that's changed, and they're back into the motorcycle clothing sector with a vengeance. The last couple of years have seen collaborations between Barber and Triumph, both drawing heavily on each other's heritage to produce exciting new ranges of biker gear. Now Barber might be better known for its wax cotton jackets, but Triumph and Barber International have collaborated on this new all leather jacket, which apparently is a first. It's a classically styled collarless blouse on style jacket in an antique brown, slightly distressed thick leather construction. It's adjustable at the hem via two press stud tabs and it features what Triumph called an action back which is basically a perforated leather gusset just behind each shoulder giving more flexibility and comfort when you're reaching for your handlebars. It also has two pleated stretch panels at the elbows to ensure a safe fit no matter what position your arms are in. The shoulders have the obligatory diamond pattern stitching and it features a central YKK zip which is well concealed to protect the paintwork on your tank. It has fully functioning zip-up vents at the shoulders and four zip-up pockets, two at the chest and two vertical pockets at the waist. The cuffs are fastened with the usual YKK zip and a leather press stud tab. Unlike the rest of Triumph jackets, this one features D30 armour at the back, shoulders and elbows. <laughs> Now, as you would expect, the armor is removable if you just want to wear the jacket casually. Now, it does come with a thermal liner, but it's not a full thermal liner, it's just a waistcoat. So this jacket probably won't be suitable for extremely cold weather. There are leather edged cutouts on the inside of the waistcoat, which give you access to the jacket's internal pockets. And there are two generous pockets, one on each side on the inside of the jacket large enough to take one of your larger mobile phones and then perhaps your wallet on the other side. Now I've always found Barber's sizing a little bit confusing. In the real world a Barber large is actually a medium and you usually find that you have to go up one or two sizes to get a suitable fit. But I'm glad to say that where this jacket's concerned Triumph's influence has won over and it's true to Triumph's size charts. A large is a large and medium is a medium. Now I'm a 46 inch chest and I found this jacket which is a large fits me perfectly. It fits snug around the shoulders, the chest and the arms when it's got the liner in. It's a little bit looser when the liner's removed but it fits just like a motorcycle jacket should. The cut is generous around the stomach area so if you've got a Rubenesque figure you should find that your normal size will fit perfectly without having to trade up a size. The only problem area that I found is along the forearms and the cuffs. Now the circumference of my wrist is about seven and a half inches and once I've got my wrist watch on I find it extremely difficult to fasten the zip up all the way and fasten that press stud tab and once I've got a pair of summer gloves tucked up the sleeve I find it totally impossible to fasten the tabs. 
Now, obviously being leather, this jacket will have to go through a break-in period, and it'll be interesting to see whether that becomes easier with time. Now, there's no doubt about it, this jacket does turn heads and it does provoke comments, but that comes at a price. Your normal mid-range Triumph jacket's running at about £330 or thereabouts and the higher level jackets are just under £400. Now once you've taken this jacket and added the barber name to it, it comes in at a whopping £490. Having said that, I don't think that Triumph's going to have any trouble shifting these jackets this year and you can easily spend that same amount of money or even more on similar jackets made by other manufacturers. Right, that's about all I've got time for this week. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope you found it useful. I'll leave a link for this jacket on the Triumph website in the video description. And I would just like to shout out a big thank you to everybody who commented uh, regarding this channel theft problem I had at the weekend. I really did appreciate your comments and your support and it means a lot to me. Right, for next week's video I've ordered a few bits and pieces from Moton Customs. Um, a few sparkly bits for the bike. So we'll be taking a look at those. Until then, I'll see you next time.